Welcome back, BC students, and to topic 10.2 we go. We're going to talk about a new kind of series, our first official brand new series type, the geometric series, which begins our long journey into all of the various convergence tests that we're going to learn about series. We're going to take a look at two examples that pertain to our introduction to geometric series. So first of all, let's revisit what a geometric series is. We talked about it just a little bit in topic 10.1, but a very specific example might look like what I've got here. Now, notice that I could simplify this, and maybe I could call this this could be presented as 3 plus 6 plus 12 plus 24. Hopefully you see that that's what each of those terms would simplify to. Well, it doesn't take a whole heck of a lot to see that we're just multiplying by 2 each time, right? And you can see that that's even further broken down by the way that I chose to write this as 3 plus 3 times 2 to the first plus 3 times 2 to the second, etc. That's when you know you have a geometric series, when it has that vibe going on where you can easily write it as a summation expression where you take A and multiply it by R and raise that R to the nth power. Now we might think, well, what is this A that you speak of? Well, that A is going to be the first term. The r is this ratio times 2 that we talked about, and raising that to the n power facilitates this whole idea of the power getting bigger, bigger, and bigger. But there's a catch. There's always a catch, isn't there? And the catch is this. Quite often, your geometric series are going to start at 0, and that's going to be a bit unusual. And the reason why we want that to happen is so that we can retain this nice AR to the N so that we can get this first term, because R to the 0 is just 1. Now, I understand there are ways that you could change this. What if I want to start this at 1? By golly, well, I suppose you could do that. And there's nothing wrong with starting the n at 1, in which case you can adjust and make r raised to the n minus 1. But a lot of times we like this clean look of this a times r to the n. Note that a can't be 0 because then you really don't have much of a sequence, do you? All right, so what do we know about geometric series? Well, we discussed this briefly before, but we have a really wonderful geometric series that will converge if that R value has a certain look to it. And that R value's absolute value has to be greater than or equal to 1 to diverge, which then means if R has an absolute value of less than 1, then we converge. And that's exactly what you guys are seeing here in the second step. That absolute value of r must be less than 1 in order to converge. Now I, I have to I have to laugh a little bit here, and I know this is seen in most textbooks, but they make this mention here also that the absolute value of r at the same time is greater than 0. Oh, it is. Okay, well, I wonder how often that happens the absolute value of r is going to be greater than zero. Well, the reason why that's there is simply to reinforce the fact that r cannot equal zero. All right, so I wouldn't read much more into it than that. Now, the final piece of the puzzle. The geometric series that we discussed here, if it does converge, actually can be compute it. You can actually find out what all of the infinite number of terms add up to. And that is just using this formula, a over 1 minus r, as long as n starts with 0. And you can see how we talked about that already just a little bit. So a couple of geometric series tips from Mr. Record here. Number one, a geometric series does not have to begin with an index of 0, though it often does. And number two, a more intuitive way to compute the sum of a convergent geometric series is think of the sum as being the first term of the series divided by 1 minus the common ratio. Sometimes we get so caught up in this formula and like, what is A again? Well, we just want the first term of the series, and then we'll take 1 minus the common ratio, and it works every single time. So let's take a look at 
some problems here. In our first example, very simple, we're just going to identify whether or not each of these would be a geometric series. All we need to do is say yes or no. So let's play the yes or no game. Number A, 1A, is this a geometric series? Well, I look and see n is equal to 1, but that's okay right? It doesn't have to start at zero. I look and I see I have a value here, an r potentially raised to an n power. I would say yes to this. And it's not a yes because this r is less than one. I'm going to tell you if this was a seven to the n, I would still have a geometric series. It just probably wouldn't converge. Now let's look at part b. Summation of 1 over n. The answer to this is a no. You just don't have the form of a constant raised to the n. What you have here is called the harmonic series. We're going to learn about it later. Looking at C, is that a geometric series? And after a little bit of inspection, we come to the conclusion that is a no. I believe that that, excuse me, would be called an arithmetic series. So we have one yes and two no's. Let's move on to our second example, which is going to be a little bit more along the lines of what you really need to take out of this particular topic with geometric series. Evaluate each of these geometric series or tell me that it diverges. So part A, the summation as n goes from 0 to infinity of 1.1 to the n. Well, the very first thing that we want to do, verify that it's geometric, and it is. It has that look. And then take a look at your r, and you know that this r is 1.1, right? Well, the absolute value of that r is definitely greater than or equal to 1, which means we are going to diverge. And it's nice that instead of just writing the word diverges, I have a little bit of proof up here that kind of indicates how I know it diverges in case the directions might ask for that. <coughs> All right, let's take a look at part E, or part B. <coughs> Excuse me. The summation from zero to infinity of E to the negative n power. Now, on close inspection, a lot of students would say that this diverges. However, I think we need to give this another look. And what I would suggest is try to rewrite this in various ways that might shed some light on it. You all know that e to the negative n can be written as 1 over e to the positive n. Now, that might not look like it follows the whole r value all raised to the n. But because that numerator is a 1, you need to kind of think about how else you could rewrite this. Wouldn't you be able to just wrap that n exponent outside of this whole expression like that? because your numerator is 1, 1 to the n is going to be 1 still. And now you look at this as your r, and you notice that, yes, the absolute value of that r is definitely less than 1, and it's bigger than 0. So we have a convergent geometric series. So all we have to do is note, do we have 0 as our starter? And we do. So we take the a value and divide it by 1 minus the r, and that's going to be our sum. Now, the a value seems to be invisible here. Well, there isn't one that's present because it's equal to 1. And so sometimes you have to look out for things like that. Now, if that bothers you, another thing you can just simply do is plug 0 in for n, 1 over e to the 0 is going to be 1, so you're going to see that first term to be 1 that way. So in any event, I have my 1 on top. I'm going to take 1 minus the 1 over e on bottom. And let's go ahead and simplify this as multiple choice questions will require that you do so. And so we have a common denominator of e on the bottom, so 
1 over e minus 1 all over e. And then when I multiply by the reciprocal, I have e over e minus 1. And that's what this would converge to. Probably would be nice to say converges to. Um, it's assumed that we know that if we produce an answer. All right, let's look at part C. Summation as one goes uh, as n goes one to infinity of three times negative 0.75. Well, again, we focus on this because we have a really nice a possibly r to the n, and if r is equal to negative 0.75, it's very clear that the absolute value of that r is indeed 0.75, which is less than one, and obviously greater than zero. So therefore, we have a convergent geometric series. Now this one's tricky this one's all sorts of tricky it's very common for a student to use that a over 1 minus r formula way too literally and we would plug 3 in for the top and 1 minus negative 0.75 but that will yield an incorrect answer and i could prove that to you on the calculator here in a moment so what we need to do is really think this through what is the first term well if n is equal to 1 we would have 3 times negative 0.75. Maybe we better think of that as 3 times the fraction negative 3 over 4. That might be a little bit easier. That's going to be negative 9 over 4. And then our denominator is going to be 1 minus that value of r, which is negative 3 fourths. Now when we simplify this, we get negative 9 fourths over 1 plus 3 fourths is going to be 7 fourths. Hopefully you see that the 4s end up canceling each other, and we end up with negative 9 sevenths as your final answer. Now, if a student had carelessly assumed that the a is 3 and that the r was the 0 0.75, negative 0 0.75, you can see that you would have gotten an answer that looked like this. You would have had 12 sevenths as an answer, which is not the same as negative 9 sevenths. Right? Let's take a look and see what this answer would uh, be if we were to use technology. So let's see what we've got here on our TI Inspire. Remember, you have a math template button that will access summations. And you can just type it in as exactly as it appears, n equal 1, 2, infinity. Will this work? Will the calculator be able to do this? Well, let's find out. We're going to take the summation of three times the quantity negative 0.75 all to the nth power. And if we hit enter, it seems like we have a little problem here. Non-real result. Why would this give us a non-real result? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I'm just scratching my head here thinking, what did we do wrong? Well, basically, what we did wrong was we assumed that the calculator is going to be able to handle this massive number. So there's a way that you can kind of cheat here. And a lot of times, if I try to evaluate a summation that goes to infinity, I'll just try to settle for something that's not quite there to infinity. Maybe something like 500 might work. And we can see that the calculator was able to handle the 500 numbers that we were summing. Maybe in some instances you could get lucky and try 1,000. And it looks like 1,000 is giving us about the same decimal value as the 500 was giving us. Well, it turns out I have a strong suspicion that if we were to take our answer, which is negative 9 sevenths, convert to a decimal, it's going to be the same result. So we did get the correct answer. So the thing that you've got to remember with problem C, and C was probably the trickiest one on this page, is the fact that the N started with 1, and you had to really clue into that. Now if we take a look at problem C, I'm sorry, problem, the second problem C. Uh, I know my alphabet. Let's look at D now. So if we look at problem D, we have a similar situation maybe that we were confronted with in part B. Now I know that the numerator is not a 1 and the propensity for students to think is oh there's no way that this can be a geometric series. 
but it can be and it will be because that 3 is simply going to act as our a value. If we plop it in front, and then we could think of this 2 as being written in a denominator underneath 1, and then the n can wrap all around that, and we have a, the same expression. And not only do we have a geometric series, we have one that will converge because the r is 1 half, and of course that means that the absolute value of r is between 0 and 1 like we like it to be. So since n starts with 0, you could blindly just jump right to that 3 and say that your sum is 3 over 1 minus a half. But if you weren't sure, plug in your first value for n, and that will produce the first term right? And you would get 3 regardless. 3 divided by a half is 6. So you've got a series that will converge to 6. Taking a look at part E, we have an R value of 3 halves. What does that mean? No good for convergence because our R absolute value is greater than or equal to 1, and therefore this series is going to diverge we can't add it up. The numbers are going to get too big too fast. And finally, one of my favorites here, part f, the summation of e divided by pi <laughs> raised to the n power. Well, it's written in its pretty standard geometric series form. The r is just bizarre. It's e divided by pi. The only way a student would have a pretty you know, fighting good fighting chance to finish this is to know that e is about 2.71 and pi is about 3.14. You have to know those so that you can compare them and see that the e on top is smaller. Therefore, this does indeed converge. The first term is actually going to be a 1 because n starts with 0, you have this hidden 1 in front. So your sum would just simply be 1 over 1 minus e over pi, and I suppose if we had to get a common denominator in the denominator of pi, we would end up with pi minus e over pi in that denominator. Multiply by this reciprocal, and you got a goofy looking sum, but nonetheless, that's what the series would converge to. And there you go. That is the basics of the simplest series probably that we have going, the geometric series. Thanks for joining. We'll see you next time.